Hello everyone, welcome to the Duo MFA course by Networkers Home. I am Pranav and I will be your instructor for the entire session. The modules for this session will cover the identity theft attacks, what is MFA and the challenges faced while deploying MFA. We will then have a look at the Duo's multi-factor authentication solution, the policies, the configuration, the testing part. And lastly, we will conclude with a lab demo and I'll be telling you how to sign up for a free trial of Duo for 30 days wherein you can check yourself the Duo admin portal and configure various policies for protecting different applications. Before getting started with the course, let me first introduce myself. My name is Pranav Nangaukar. I am a technical trainer for Duo Security at Networkers Home. I am currently based in Toronto, Canada. I have five plus years of experience in implementing and managing network, cybersecurity and SDN solutions for multinational organizations. I am a Cisco certified security specialist in the domain of identity management and implementation. I hope you will enjoy this course. Let's begin with the introduction to identity theft attacks and privacy laws in different countries for use and safeguarding the personal information. What is an identity theft attack in cybersecurity? As per the standard definition, Identity theft is the act of using another person's personal information without their consent for committing fraud and other crimes. In simple terms, it is impersonating an user and using their personally identifiable information, which is known as PII in the cybersecurity terms, for any means like personal, political, or financial gains. Personal information can be the name, date of birth, login details bank account information, social security number, or even the address. When it comes to identity theft attacks for cybersecurity attacks, super admin or redirect username and password can be stolen to perform changes on the network and security devices, like example, changing the VLAN of a port or allowing traffic from certain public IP for getting inside the network easily. You can relate it with any possible example relating to the network and security domain. There are strict rules and laws against the criminals who are involved in the identity theft attacks. Now just think, why would someone steal anyone's personal information without their permission or consent? Because this information is very valuable to the attackers in this 21st century as humans have a habit of using this information anywhere, for example creating the passwords. There are specialized tools available to apply this information for guessing the passwords. This can be very dangerous, especially considering the example of internet banking. Now we have a username and we set a password of our own choice during the first login. If attackers steal the username and password by any possible means, we can be completely even bankrupt as all the money will be either misused or transferred by the attacker to their own personal accounts. This is a crime and there must be some laws for punishing attackers for this kind of behavior. So, in the United States, there is a dedicated Identity Theft and Deterrence Act amended in the US Code Section 1028 of the federal government to prohibit identity theft by either physical or digital means. And it is also declared as a separate crime as per the law. In the state of California, the California Penal Code Section 530 prohibits identity theft and false impersonation of any other individual for any possible means. The states of New York, Colorado and many other different states in the United States also have their own laws and acts for taking actions against the criminals for identity theft. Similarly like the US, Canada have also their own privacy laws against identity theft. Canada's privacy law is known as PREPADA, which stands for the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act. This law is responsible for safeguarding and protecting the personal information of Canadians against any breaches. The Office of Privacy Commissioner deals with all the identity theft related cases in Canada. There is a similar and more strict privacy law in the Europe or the EU region which is known as the GDPR. MFA is a critical part of the authentication process and the username and password of any individual are a part of the most personal and private information of anyone. 
this is the reason why we need to know about these privacy laws there is no need to have an in-depth understanding of these laws but having an overview or just an idea about this will help to understand the purpose why a multi-factor authentication solution even exists if we look at the statistics by Verizon's 10th edition of data breach investigation report 81% of the cyber security breaches were due to the stolen credentials but the reasons for stolen credentials being firstly use of compromised devices like mobile phones laptop or websites these devices or websites are loaded with trojans which can collect the user data in which even the user doesn't come to know how the data is stolen this is because trojans are capable of simulating itself as a genuine program and then collecting the data secretly without being noticed social engineering using this technique the attacker tries to gain the credentials in a very sophisticated manner by calling or sending phishing emails to the victim user and then they act as the customer support agents or calling from the company and then they gain the credentials another reason is the use of malware well the malware collects the keylog data in the backend which ultimately captures the password and other typing patterns of the user and the most important reason is human error where we use simple and easy passwords and then it gives access to the critical apps and websites when these credentials are stolen now the same statistics on the slides just addition would be the credential stealing or popularly known as the credential stuffing is also responsible for 51 percent of the data breaches social engineering techniques as we discussed uh, are responsible for 43 percent of the attacks which result in a data breach credential stuffing is also a reason why mfa is important to protect the applications the attackers have databases of millions of breached or stolen credentials from their previous security attacks now even if th hundred or thousand of them could be the accounts whose credentials are successfully cracked and are usable for these attacks so using these credential stuffing bots the attackers have made a trend nowadays to launch credential stuffing attacks which is a kind of brute force attacks where all the username and password combinations are tried and tested until a successful attempt is made to log in to either the website or the device this is done to gain personal data which is useful either for launching ne next set of attacks or gaining financial data like the credit card numbers or the banking details so to protect the personal data in addition to the government laws NIST which is known as the National Institute of Standards and Technology works under the US Government of Commerce recommends the use of multi-factor authentication solution as per the NIST special publication 863b any PII or personal data requires to be protected with an additional layer of security using multi-factor authentication so any MFA solution developed and designed by any vendor must be compliant with this NIST standard now comes the solution so whatever problems we saw till now we discussed till now all the types of attacks the breaches so the answer to everything is multi-factor authentication now what is MFA now as you can see on the slide there are just three pictures one is a login screen, one is a mobile device, probably an iPhone, and one is the image of a fingerprint. So multi-factor authentication is a technology which can combine all the three factors you, which you can see. That is something you know, something you have, and something you are. What is something you know? Something you know, the best example of something you know can be a username or an email and a password. Now, most of the websites use this specific factor of authentication for authenticating the users. What is authentication? Authentication is the process of verifying whether the user is actually the user who he or her claims to be. Now my name is Pranav. 
So when logging to any specific website, consider networkershome.com. I have a account on Networkers Home, and when I am trying to log into Networkers Home, it will check or ask probably for my username and password. Now suppose when I enter my username and password, it will check with the backend database whether the credentials which I have provided match with those which were present in the database during the account creation. So this will verify whether I am only Pranav or someone else is trying to log in using my credentials. Now as we saw in the credential stuffing attack or identity theft attack, if in case my network or home's credentials or the username and password are stolen, anyone with that credentials can misuse and make use of my account order something from the website or do anything or can even steal my credit card data if I have updated it on the account any possible means of gaining access to the username and password the next is something you have so as per the multi-factor authentication solution you have to combine either something you have or something you are along with something you know. To simplify, along with username and password, you have to combine either a push notification acceptance or a biometric authentication. Now there might be a question from many of those that can we use all the three factors and the answer would be yes. You can combine all the three factors and complete the security of your application or device you are trying to log in using all the three factors. But keep in mind all the three factors when you combine it, it is very difficult to enforce this security. And if, if you don't have access to any one of this factor, you will be locked up. Your account will be locked, you will not gain access to the account, no matter how urgent it is. Now coming to something you have, something you have, it can be a push notification on your mobile device. It can be a SMS on your mobile phone or probably a mobile call, which you will get an automated call instead of same like the SMS or you have a physical kind, a token kind of thing mostly RSS secure ID solution traditionally used to have this hardware token kind of thing now they have soft tokens available on mobile, desktops, whatever the type of device is now something you are something you are consists of the fingerprint or the retina scan or sometimes even the patterns like speaking pattern, walking pattern, but these pattern based approach is taken by a very high level and very secure organizations like the US government or something which is very, very secure. But for normal organizations or even the multinational organization, it is basically the fingerprint scan or the retina scan. Now, most of the customers combine the second and third factor, choose any one of the th second and third factor with something you know. So username and password is obviously used, but either a push notification or something you are, which is a biometric notification or biometric authentication, you can call it. 